Hey, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, man, this doesn't work. Let's get open for business here this morning on the Don't Sleep on the Dallas Cowboys Report because you literally cannot sleep on the Dallas Cowboys. Things happen late in the evening, late at night, first thing in the morning, so you want to be up to speed with all that is America's team. Whew. Well, there's some speculation that the Miami Dolphins may let go of Danny Amendola. Danny Amendola, who started out with the Dallas Cowboys, was in training camp. You've seen him in hard knocks, but the Cowboys let him go. He went on with the Rams and, of course, the Patriots, and now is with the Miami Dolphins in the second year of a guaranteed $12 million contract and may be let go. And there's some thought that maybe the Cowboys would bring him back because his contract is guaranteed. Whether he's in Miami or not, this money. And there's some speculation that the Cowboys might be interested in re-signing him. I don't know if that's going to be the case or not. Um, it's an inter interesting proposition. He's an older guy. But being that he's on the tail end of his career, he may not ask for as much as, say, Cole Beasley will. And it may be a, <clears throat> a nice transition to bring in Super Bowl player experience. We'll have to wait and see. But, again, that's just the speculation that you're hearing out there. Um one thing I do want to ask you guys about, we do have the countdown clock. We are right now 209 days, 11 hours, 49 minutes, and 35 seconds away from kickoff of the 2019 season. And we have a lot of work to do between now and then. Some people have said that, you know, we love the show and things, but, you know, things are just getting a little too busy here on the man cave and that I need to kind of pare some stuff down. I actually did take some stuff off of the desk here. Um, but I do kind of like having some of this stuff because there's a, actually a mixer that you guys can't see that's right back here with all the wires that go to all the microphones and the computers and the TVs and things. And, of course, i got to have Joe Boo for good luck. So a lot of that helps to hide those workings. There's a laptop that's over here that I use and things and the webcam. So some of that stuff is by design to make it look better. Um, some of it's by design to help hide more of me because, you know, the less of me you see is probably better. If there's something else to distract you, you know, you, you, you don't want to look at this too much. I mean, it's hiding the belly, it's hiding the wrinkles and all that. Because you look too long, you may go blind. So give me your thoughts as I go through and redo the set on things that you think that might look better. Um, I'm thinking about mounting that actually up underneath of here for the countdown clock, but then it hides the Cowboys Avenue. So we're going to be adding another locker over here as well with another monitor so maybe i don't know we'll, we'll figure it out but I, I would love to hear your guys comments and things on there what i need to do now this channel has always been a dak prescott friendly channel i make no bones about that that i have always been in the tank for dak prescott from the time i saw him play in the senior ball and I've always believed that the dallas cowboys were blessed to have gotten that guy for a multitude of reasons if you'll remember from Troy Aikman to Tony Romo, all of the quarterbacks that we had brought in, that we had drafted or free agents or signed, I mean, from the Quincy Carters to uh, the uh, Drew Bledsoe's to Ryan Leaf was even in here, uh, the Anthony Wrights, you know, we had, um, I, I just, it's, I don't even want to think about it, but we had just kept guy after guy and every year starting somebody different and we got blessed with getting Tony Romo who was undrafted Tony Romo got paid peanuts beginning of his career until 2013 when he signed that 108 million dollar um, contract extension for six years which at the time was oh my god you can't sign a quarterback for that kind of money but he deserved it he had earned it he brought stability to the Dallas Cowboys and whether you agree with his record or not, that's a rare thing in the NFL is to get a quarterback, especially that was undrafted, to do what he did. And we saw when Tony Romo got hurt, having Brandon Whedon, having to sign Matt Castle, having Kellen Moore, that the future did not look real good for the Dallas Cowboys as far as quarterback was looking right then and there. 
that we had better hope that Tony Romo could get better and get back on the field. And the plan originally was that Tony Romo would be there for a few more years, and then we would start looking at getting another quarterback. They didn't draft Dak Prescott to be the franchise quarterback. They drafted him basically to be another one of the guys to maybe develop and see, can this guy maybe be a backup for us? Is he a step up or improvement as a backup quarterback? And hopefully he won't have to play for us. And that's the way he was brought in during training camp. He wasn't meant to be the guy, but Kellen Moore broke his ankle. Tony Romo got his back broken, and all of a sudden, they're looking down the line, and he's all we got. Which has been the story of his career, because it's always been that he was never thought to be the guy. It was always somebody else got hurt, and we're desperate, let's throw him in. And he's rose to the occasion. Three years, we have not had to worry about having a quarterback. Three years of stability he's already brought to this team. In three years, two division titles, and three playoff games, one victory, a rookie of the year. And right now his arrow is going up. But here's the thing that he has also brought to this team that people don't even quantify. They don't talk about it. The fact that he was a fourth-round drafted quarterback He's not getting paid jack. Tony Romo still cost us $8.9 million last year and $10.9 million the year before on our books. Part of that salary cap was the dead money that we still owed Tony Romo. Had we gone out and signed a veteran quarterback because you start seeing, like, you know, Sam Bradford getting $20 million last year to replace Tony Romo or, like, what the Washington Redskins are going to have to do knowing that they're paying Alex Smith, $23 $23 million this year, and he's not going to be playing, they're going to have to sign one of these other guys. They're literally going to have probably $45 million tied up in quarterback money. they got no choice. They don't have anybody, and they're on the chain for Alex Smith. The fact that Dak Prescott in three years hasn't made $3 million is just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. What that enabled us to do is to be able to Get out from cap hell. Excuse me. Got a little congestion. Don't mean to snort in your ears. Tony Romo's contract, and it's not Tony Romo's fault, but we kept using it as a piggy bank because we were always over the cap. We'd use that trigger, pull out $10 million, make it guaranteed money, give it to Tony Romo, and get cap relief to spend on other players. Before Dak Prescott, every year at this time, we would be about $20, $25 million over the cap and would have to gut players just to get even or restructure contracts. A word we have not heard with the Dallas Cowboys in a while. It enabled us to get even. Right now, depending on which site you listen to, we're somewhere between $45 and $54 million of cap room before we let anybody else go. That's just the guys in a contract. But there'll be guys that they look at and say, well, maybe Sean Lee's not coming back, so here's another $9 million. Or maybe Lyle Collins ends up being, you try and find the cheaper options, so there's the $9 million. and stuff. So there's ways of getting more money if they want to, but it's not a necessity. When you look at the other teams in our division, and I know a lot of you say, well, I don't care about those teams because I'm a Cowboy. You understand, you got to know your enemy, and you got to know what's going on around you because you got to play those guys two times a year. And you have to figure out how to get advantages on them and what you need to do to keep up or to go past them. That's why we talk about the Eagles. That's why we talk about the Giants and the Redskins. Because they have a direct correlation to us making the playoffs. We have to go through those guys. So you need to know about them as well. But when you look at the Redskins and the Giants, they're somewhere in the low 20s as cap room, and the Eagles are like $9 million over. They've got to get rid of some people to get below the cap by March 5th. What Dak has been able to do, because he hasn't been making Jack, has been able to give us that relief in that cap space. And it's always crazy to me because people keep saying, you can't pay Dak. You know, he's not deserving of a contract. Give him $10 million a year. Come on, man. Let's be real. As we start going through this list here and look at what quarterbacks are getting paid, um, the fact that Dak Prescott is getting what he is is a travesty. 
Almost every team on here has two quarterbacks on the roster that are all making more than Dak Prescott. And for him to take all of the abuse from all of you trolls and haters out there, not to mention to be the most scrutinized quarterback in the NFL, to be making $800,000 a year? Come on, man. Now, I know that's a lot of money to you and me, but not to get your ass kicked out there every Sunday to have 300-pound men that can run a 4640 trying to kill you and take your head off. I'd like to see some of you guys out there try that crap. But as we look at some of this stuff in here, this amazes me. Aaron Rodgers, you know, arguably the best quarterback in football. $33.5 million. I, you know, you can't argue with that. And you got... Matty Ice, who's getting thirty million. Um, I could argue with that one a little bit, but I won't. What's funny is somebody said to me, "Dak only benefits from the team that's around him." You can say that about any quarterback, because he said if you put him in with Miami, his numbers wouldn't be as good, and I I'd agree with that. But let's say you took Matt Ryan from Atlanta and put him to Miami, would his numbers still be as good as throwing to Julio Jones, Sanu, and Calvin Ridley? I dare say that Dak Prescott's numbers would be better if he went to Atlanta. Underneath that offensive system, with those playmakers, than it would be in Dallas. You don't think Deshaun Watson benefits from DeAndre Hopkins? And the ability he has to make plays, there's a correlation to talent around you. But then when you start getting down to Kirk Cousins, $28 million. Do you realize Kirk Cousins is getting basically about 30 times what Dak Prescott makes? And Kirk Cousins has never even beat Dak Prescott? 30 times. Kirk Cousins is making twice as much per game as Dak makes all season. Let that sink in for a moment. Kirk Cousins is twice what Dak Prescott makes in a season for every game. Jimmy Garoppolo, $27 million off of seven games they paid him that contract. Matthew Stafford, who Dak Prescott had more touchdown passes than last year, $27 million. Derek Carr, who doesn't realize that there's no crying in football, is getting $25. You know, and then as you get down here, some of these older contracts, you can kind of say, okay, maybe they deserve a raise. I mean, Drew Brees. Drew Brees should be up there in the top. Drew Brees is just incredible. Andrew Luck, well, he's coming out back after a couple of years of being injured and being the comeback player of the year. You know, that, that sounds about right. But Alex Smith. Alex Smith, $23 million. Joe Flacco, 22. And when I hear guys out there, some of the trolls that say, you know, well, we should sign Nick Foles or we should sign Teddy Bridgewater. I'll take Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill, who's done absolutely positively nothing and can't stay healthy? Seriously? Because, see, Dak Prescott's done something that no other Cowboys quarterback has done, which is stay healthy three years in a row. So you're talking about saying Teddy Bridgewater, who hasn't played meaningful minutes in three years because of injuries. You talk about Ryan Tannehill, who constantly has knee issues, um, should be brought in. Or you say Joe Flacco, who's at $22 million, whose career is waning and really won Super Bowls because of Ray Lewis and the defense. I'm trying to understand that one. But here's the crazy thing as you go down through this list. And you start looking at some of these people, you know, Tyrod Taylor, fifteen million, uh, Nick Foles, fourteen million, um, Jameis Winston, twenty-five million, you know, um, AJ McLaren, ten million. You keep on going down the list of quarterbacks, and I, I counted these, and I hope I counted it right. But you don't get down to Dak Prescott until, I believe, 68th. Sixty-eighth is where Dak Prescott is being paid. 
His contract for three years hasn't been $3 million. He's taken more abuse, more scrutiny from every, than, than anyone out there. But what he has done for this team by being that fourth round drafted quarterback, by being the guy that's been the stability for the team, it's enabled us to get ahead and get cap relief. Because make no mistake about it, the plan was keep Tony Romo for a few more years and then figure out what the next guy is going to be. We saved a boatload of money, not by switching to Geico, but by switching to Dak Prescott. So take that all you Dak Prescott haters, because Dak Prescott is the reason why this team is headed in the right direction. I'm Mark Holmes, and, well, I got to go get to my day job. I got to change a sewer injector pump in a crock that broke. It's some nasty crap. I'll see you guys soon.